last time on Dice Funk. The best possible view of this tadpole, so Gustav can just get in there with the with the beak, root around, bite this thing out, and spit it across the room. Sacred flame! No, don't hurt it! Well, there's a number of rivers to choose from. You know, the sticks, of course. I took you down the Phlegathon and the Cockatiss. There's also the Leth. Uh, Nifix is going to suggest the one that, that she's never been to before. One of the most major themes of Alice in Wonderland is identity. And that's what I believe Lloyd has become. The conduit of identity. Can we run? Is that an option? Uh, Lloyd told you that if everyone in the Believers gangs up, maybe they can take down Abraham, but they'll have to kill him. If you want Abraham just to live another day, you need to take him down non-lethally. Uh, King's gonna pull his sword back. You're gonna say, I'm sorry. I love you. And then he's going to strike one long blow across Abraham's back from shoulder all the way down to his waist. Yeah, no, I mean, the shattered temple is fully shattered now. Abraham collapses on top of Cordelia. King collapses on top of Abraham. And the building collapses on top of everybody. <laughs> Rubble, 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 You know, maybe we shouldn't have 88-year-old Clint Eastwood have two different threesomes in this movie. Wait, so when you said threesomes, you meant plural. It happens multiple times? <laughs> is this an important plot point? And, and is it the same partners or different partners? And is it like one different partner and one the same? Or? God only knows Every woman you've seen in this movie has been so enchanted and charmed by him, though. You see him. What about the lesbians? You see him dancing at his daughter's wedding, and two, like, probably 30 year old women are fighting over to, like, be like, no, I want to dance to them now. No, it's my turn to dance to them. Meanwhile, 88 year old shriveled raisin Clint Eastwood is just (laughs) kind of, like, gently swaying from side to side to make it look like he's a good dancer. It's fantastic. <laughs> it just reminds me of Righteous Gemstones, where the guy's like, You want to suck an old man's dick? <laughs> oh, it's such a good show. If you ever watch Righteous Gemstones, I mean, Chris didn't even say the name of his thing, so fuck it. That's the actual the, plug. We don't need to tell people about it. No, you'll figure it out. Chris can experience it for the rest of us. But, Carrie. Like Jesus, he died for our sins. <laughs> I rented Shazam along with this movie, and I was like, that was okay. You know, it was all right. I'm so glad I decided to pick up this one, too, because I was like, oh, no, this is what I live for. (laughs) Why do you hate yourself so much? You torture yourself. Uh, So you know what I live for? Dungeons and Dragons. It is. (laughs) You got it. We're starting to get podquisition energy where it's like 15 minutes in and Laura's like, okay, time to do the thing we're here for. <laughs> See, this is the problem. Pod- podquisition has taught me how to go, okay, time to wrangle. Oh boy, my brain is broken. I don't know what happened, but for this four minutes has killed me. So last time we left the adventure, uh, the party had to fight Abraham uh, to subdue him non-lethally rather than let the believers kill him as part of the war, which was tragic, but I think ultimately probably the best possible outcome for everyone involved. Uh, We have uh, two, we had two people get knocked to zero during that fight. So uh, Lynette and Cordelia share with the audience uh, the injuries you got. Uh, So Lynette got crushed by some roof, which is not a great thing to happen. And I I think that the consequence of that is one of our wings is going to be a bit bashed out of shape, a little bit uh, bent up, and she's just not going to be able to. She's not going to be flying quite straight for a, for a, for a couple of days. She's a little uh, well, you're a wing in a sling. Yeah, a wing in a sling. That's so fun to say. She's not going to be doing any barrel rolls anytime soon or anything, you know. And no no amazing do- aerial dogfighting maneuvers. I've decided that, along with my torso, which is already crooked, 
uh, my tail, the tip of my tail is also crooked. Like, have you seen cats that got their door closed in the tail? Not good. Don't do it. Sometimes it happens and it gets a little crooked. It's like that. Or as Laura said in the Skype chat, the girlfriends are now even less straight. Oh no, we we both got a little less straight. Oh no. Uh, Uh, Let's all harmonize again. That was really fun last time. (laughs) (laughs) I love harmonizing. Okay, so uh, we actually are going to start our episode like the camera just immediately like smash cuts into the four of you, King, Lynette, Cordelia, and Blake. Uh, uh, Lynette's w- wing is in a sling, and Cordelia has like a little a bandage around her tail or something. It's like it's like a comedy injury, right? <laughs> oh, but yeah, no, I'm just like turning into a little square. <laughs> Eventually, I'll be an Ouroboros. <laughs> Okay, you're, I don't think you're that crooked. Do you want you? You can be an Ouroboros. <laughs> I'm not if you want. that crooked, but I'm gonna get there if I don't stop my bullshit. <laughs> I think actually Cordelia, the crooked god, is in, an incredible uh, title. Oh, that's pretty cool. I I think maybe the two girlfriends are just having a cuddle, being like, oh, we just feel a bit, we're just a bit fragile. Is is Gustav okay? Did he hurt his beak doing surgery? <laughs> G- Gustav's all right. I think Gustav is is currently looking after the both of us. He's the adult now. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's the scene. King, Blake, Cordelia, and Lynette. And then the, the camera does a 180 to show Abraham in his cell. Uh, because we are now back in the Harmonium building. Uh, we went here before in the third arc when the egg was stolen from the Harmonium. Do we recall this? No. A lot of things have happened, Austin. That's why I'm asking. I remember the egg, because I love eggs. Yeah, the Harmonium are the cops, basically, and they have a bunch of uh, like top-secret cells where they keep things like life itself. And now Abraham, who is in like his Hannibal Lecter, uh, Joker, oh. Benedict Cumberbatch jail. Who else in do they jail. put in that kind of jail? Huh? He's in jail. Yeah, he's been captured by the Believers, who are aligned with the Harmonium. These things happen. <laughs> you did these things. <laughs> it happens, you know. I didn't. I didn't say it wasn't my fault. I was just saying it happened. That's a great, <laughs> a great way to get out of anything. It's like you're holding the bloody <laughs> knife, and the cops are like, "What happened?" You're like, "These it things happen." <laughs> Your girlfriend catches you on the bathroom floor. It wasn't me. These things happen. <laughs> so much i know that was for you thank you do you want to tell your story to the audience of how you didn't understand what it was about oh when i was little i thought there was like somebody like i thought they got caught like hitting the bathroom door like hit punching it like banging on it because i didn't know what sex was <laughs> i also thought that my body was my baloney so my baloney lived over the ocean i'm not sure you know what sex is today <laughs> <laughs> oh please we all know that i do no. Okay, so that's the scene. The 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 Furies have been allowed to see Abraham uh in his jail cell because you did the Harmonium Assault and got their big egg back earlier in the campaign. But Abraham has been captured. So here he is. How you doing, bud? Huh. Well, my back hurts. <laughs> my tail hurts. Yeah, you'll get over that. It was a good fight though. We all gave our best. Yeah, really necessary and worth our time. So, it may not make a lot of sense to you, wizard. You you strike me as an intelligent sort, but people like King and I, we have a hard time expressing ourselves. I learned a lot about your resolve and about what needs to come next. So thank you. What does need to come next? Well, I've spoken with the leader of the Believers, uh, Camilla. In return... For my surrender, we have negotiated a a kind of deal. Oh, really? What's that? A deal is an agreement between two people or parties that uh, allows them to come to uh, an arrangement that's mutually beneficial. Can I shush Blake? Can I just put my hand over his mouth? Like a flower thing? (laughs) I'm going to put my hands over both of their mouths. (laughs) Abraham says, well, actually it was inspired by King. All these these long months with all this war bubbling up and then spilling over, 
King has been saying to everyone who would listen. Why can't the believers in the eighth are compromise? Why can't they come together? Why can't they find some common ground? And everyone, including myself, said to King, that's not possible. There, there's no middle ground. There's no compromise. But after fighting you all, I think, I think there's something still worth fighting for in this that we can do together. And Camilla agrees, which is why, in exchange for my surrender, the Aether will be absorbed into the Believers and constitute a new department for controlling gods who abuse their powers. Oh, that's good. Then that means none of the Aether have to die, then. Hopefully, King. Most Aether are loyal to me. However, there are some who will not accept my surrender or these terms and may continue the fight. Oh, like Lancelot? I bet there's Lancelot. He's very, so, so tiny and so angry. At the mention of Lancelot, Abraham, like, <laughs> gives you a knowing look. And is like, yes, uh, Lancelot knew our situation militarily was hopeless. After the Believers defeated the Lady of Pain in public, we had mass desertions and the ranks of the Believers swelled. So he, in his admitted wisdom, understood the battle was lost and escaped on a what he called a secret mission. Did he say what it was? Not specifically. He didn't trust me, I don't think, not to, well, to tell people like you right now. Which was, once again, smart of him. <laughs> He's He was always the brains of our operation. And once again, he has been proven correct. I have lost, and right now would be telling you his plans if he had shared them with me, so. I'm just saying, if I were Lancelot, I be pretty upset if I found out that you went and gave up the whole thing. Uh, I mean, I think Lancelot would have been upset about really anything, so... I, I mean, the impression I get of him is that he's never happy about anything. He's a whiny little shit, so... Yeah, exactly. Lancelot is a true believer in equality and a better life for all people, and I respect and admire him greatly. But... He's a little bitch. <laughs> He's, he's, a, he's a whiny little baby who wants things done his way or the highway. <laughs> Whatever personal disagreements you all have with him, I, I can't dispute them. All I know is he went off to do something to deny the believers the full enjoyment of their victory. Even if winning the war is hopeless for our side, he still has something up his sleeve to frustrate them in the future. And he's smart, and he is resourceful. That is just petty. He's just a sore loser. But, uh, uh, either way, the, would you have maybe, like, a ballpark number of how many people you think would go with him to do things instead of, like, chilling? Is this the kind of thing where Lancelot is likely to have, like, three, four, a dozen, you know, loyal people to them? Or is this like, oh, this could end up being a new faction if left unchecked, you know, they're gonna amass a huge number of people behind them? Like, are we are we picturing, like, band of people or full-on army, potentially? Lancelot is still a threat. Okay, that is what I wanted, let's go. <laughs> Shout out to Jeff Gertzman. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's an, that's a joke for fucking nobody. <laughs> See, the whole p purpose of visiting the Shattered Temple was to find out if Lancelot's trying to get revenge on you. And so, reading between the lines, I, the answer is no. He's not even thinking about you. Hmm. Yeah, but he's still doing... I feel like whatever he's up to, I do not like, so... Oh yeah, I mean, Cordelia specifically, as the person who very publicly joined the Believers and, you know, attacked the Lady of Pain in public and stuff, he does not like you, he resents what you've done, but also, you're one of a million people he has a problem with, so it's not like he has some, he's thinking about you 24-7. If he sees you, he'll kill you, but that's just not what he's focused well, on. Well, no, I just like, what if he's doing something that might, you know, make it harder for me to be a god? He absolutely is, but I don't think King's gonna let you focus on that when Lime is still kidnapped. Oh, yeah, we still have to find Lime, damn it. So, who, who, who do we go look for next that might be a revenge wanter? Oh, the revenge wanter? Uh, 
I don't know. I don't have a lot of enemies. Are you sure you don't have enemies, dear? I'm pretty sure you have enemies. I was trying to make a joke. It didn't land. That is okay. That is okay. <laughs> now, who, 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 who hates you most, dear? Um, probably Jean because I uh, killed her, and also I killed many of her babies. And then before that, I also insulted them a lot, and then I insulted her a lot, and then killed her babies, so... You did take a specific amount of pleasure out of killing all of her children. It's not that they were her children, it's that I can't abide maggots, and I feel like that is a stance that I will not budge on. No, 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 you've made your feelings on the maggots very well Do you like maggots? No, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. They're a sign they that they're built they somewhere. Wiggle, they wiggle in an uncomfortable manner. I mean, in a pinch, you know, high in protein. But that's mm. really all I can say for them. No. Uh, but yeah, probably, probably that, Gene. I I trust you, dear, to probably know who hates you most. So, yeah, this this seems this seems like as good a plan as any. Do we know where to find her? That means she's dead. Well, yeah, but I'm assuming she got brought back, like, with slot goo or something, you know? Oh, the two should be in that giant hole. Giant hole? Yeah, the abyss. That feels kind of far. That's very annoying. I couldn't keep his... It's like if you're going to take us here because this is where you kidnapped and then wait, no, you over there. No, you over there. I just want some consistency in my crimes here, people. Maybe we could this time just like make sure to not go past the spiders. Yeah, that doesn't work. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure how welcome we'll be there. Uh, We will not. I, I don't know if the rest of the party knows, but they have been paid off. We don't know, I don't think. We don't know, and... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, what happened to Netflix? I wonder if the spiders got to... <laughs> <laughs> Come to think of it... We haven't talked about it at all. I haven't seen Nifix in a while. <laughs> I just realized that in character, none of us have acknowledged her existence. I mean, during the Cato meeting, you're all like, oh yeah, she live-streamed herself doing a crime and she's on the run now, so you all know that she's out of the picture. Yeah, it's just a question of whether or not she's also being chased by spiders. For all you know, she's having a real bad time. I mean, she's having a real bad time anyway, but it could be even worse than you know. Aren't, in life, all of us just kind of being chased by spiders? When you think the spiders about it? immortality? <laughs> yeah. No, the spiders and I have a deal. They get to live in the corner of my room as long as they don't touch me. Yeah, Flor- Floridians have a lo- ages old compact with the spiders. We have an understanding. Us and Australians. Yeah, there's too many of them. We have to we have to compromise. Um, so I guess the party uh, resolves to go find Jean, the Demon Queen, newly resurrected by uh, Pope's conduit of revenge. Although resurrected is the wrong word because all the p- people with purple goo so far you've seen have been mindless zombies. So you have no reason to believe she's alive in her souls and her body so much as there is a gene shaped thing coming for revenge. Um, but while they're talking about that king, you're not really contributing. And Abraham's, uh, you know, in his cell and he... But it puts his hand on the the glass. Oh. Uh, I will reflect that. Yeah. You sh- you share a moment, and he says, "I'm sorry, King. I know you don't want to fight anymore. I didn't know any other way to <sighs> to connect with you in that moment." Words are hard. I get it. I just, I want to feel like I can take my own path going forward. Kind of like you are. With the God Punchers. <laughs> God Punchers LLC, uh, a believer subsidiary. Um, <laughs> Abraham says, you're an inspiration to me, King. I didn't think there was any way but the way people have told me all my life. I'm a descendant of the Titans. I have to fight the gods. That's all I've known. 
but your your insistence on finding some kind of new path it it gave me something worth fighting for thank you you're welcome i'm happy you're alive still <laughs> and i've got a cool new scar can you imagine when i walk up in the gym like t- take off my top and everyone sees it they're going to go wild it's going to be so cool I wonder what happens when your pecs dance now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your skirt's going to dance. That's how we end this scene as King and Abraham just peck dancing in jail. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm off to go finish the rest of that movie. Catch you later. Uh, let's check in on Netflix. Oh, heck, how's my other character doing? I'm hoping great. Actually, I think this is probably the best Nifix has been doing all season. Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, she's 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 got a friend. She's got an objective. She's got a bone juice. She's probably doing okay. So Sharon and Nifix are uh, boating down the river Leth, which is actually a greenish river, according to old texts on the subject um i think probably Sharon explains to you what's special about this river is that the waters of the Leth. Uh, induce amnesia. Oh. Okay. This is the river of oblivion where people who want to forget their troubles come <laughs> to destroy their minds. Is is this is this a selective thing where you can get rid of like a bad memory or is this like I am I am rubbing a magna over the hard drive everything is gone. <laughs> It depends on the myth. Usually when people drink from the left, they're just t- t- totally mind wiped. But I think in Dante's Divine Comedy, uh, Dante like d- takes a dip in the left and only washes away the memory of his sin. So it's like, depends on the author. Jesus okay. fucking nerd. <laughs> I'm sorry, she asked a question. On- honestly, that's really <laughs> fascinating lore. Don't shout at Austin. He told me, <laughs> like he told me a cool him. fact. <laughs> He knows a lot about the Bible. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the only person of anybody I know in Florida who wasn't raised with religion. That's, so I know nothing. Ooh, the most read book in human history. Know something about it, why don't you? <laughs> How about I don't wanna? Um, but yeah, so that's that's the river right now. Uh, why don't you describe to me what Nifix and Sharon are up to? There's no, uh, this is there's not going to be there isn't going to be any combat in this scene. This is just a thing the audience often says, which is like, can we just have more of the characters hanging out and having fun? <laughs> so just tell me about that. Um, I I like to picture that while hell is probably not the best place to actually get it done, I like to think that that. Uh, the, the two of them have maybe set up on the on the the front of the boat some some deck chairs. They're just having a nice. They're just having a nice chill, watching the river sort of flow out in front of them, and uh, just 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 trade, trading stories. Because obviously, as much as they seem to get on well together, they've not really talked about much of what's happened on their respective adventures. Yeah, so we just in media res to uh, Sharon in a deck chair sipping a bone juice margarita, and she's like, and I said, cutie, I don't even know how to do that with a booty. Ah! <laughs> and you're like, what the fuck could you even lead to that? Uh, who who knows, but I'm sure that Nifix very much enjoyed the story. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, so, oh, tell me, tell me, tell me, what, 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 what do you do? When you are not, uh, when you when you're not working, when you're not being being the the woman of hurt, the lady of pain, you're not running a disco ship. What do you want to do outside of that? Tell me a bit about yourself. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's pretty much how I split my time. I'm a well-meaning disco tech manager during the night, and the lady of pain when I'm not sleeping. So, it's the the classic superhero story you got to keep your identity secret from your lovers and you got to patrol the city and then maintain your cover you know cliche stuff like that i'm basically batman <laughs> i mean oh my God. there are worse things to be than batman um who who exists in dice funk now um what what's what's your whole deal like here on the boat because i i used to be really into one of these um you know 
boat uh, boat DJ hall management sim games, and I, <laughs> I, I I'm real curious like how how accurate the thing was. It was a lot of just coming up with funny names for set lists, honestly. Yeah, that's that's usually outside of my purview. The DJs do with set list stuff. Uh, as a manager, it's mostly trying to get uh, bulk shipments of alcohol and trying to figure out the how to get a piece of all the drug dealing and so forth. <laughs> really, no, nothing, nothing else outside of that. No, no hobbies. No, you know, anything. Nothing you did outside of that. I think that's a lot for one life. Most people just go to their nine to five and come home and watch Clint Eastwood movies. Like, what else do you want in your life? I mean, yeah, I'm probably being a bit like. (laughs) Apologies if it sounds like I'm being like, no, not. You're not doing enough with your life. Do more. Do more. You know. I should check. Is there a monster manual or talks about the the Clint Eastwood species, (laughs) (laughs) so we can have an excuse for that. Yeah, no, like, my my whole deal for the longest time was just playing games. Like, I barely slept. It was just video games day, night, day, night, day, night. It was... It was a lot. A lot... It's... I will say this. Getting killed has made me see a lot more uh, of the outside world outside of screens. Fresh air's pretty great. (laughs) I mean, I know we said no regrets... Before we took off on this boat journey, but if you could change anything, would you? Is this where you wanted to end up? There's no point in having regrets, because regrets don't do anything to change the past. I can't change the fact I was killed. I can't change the fact where I woke up when I was. Yeah. I'm going to make the best of the, of, of the situation now. You know, wh- whether there are things I would have changed or not. That's kind of irrelevant. I can't change him, so why worry about that? Maybe not literally, but we are on the river of oblivion. If you want to start over, it's one of the only places you literally can. Yeah. I don't know. If if you'd asked me a couple of weeks ago in the goth phase, maybe. Um, I feel like right now I need to remember... I feel like I've got to remember what got me here, because otherwise I'm going to lose the resolve to keep going with this. You know, there's been some stuff since I died that I hasn't been great, and I don't really want to think about. But you know, I I would rather I would rather the the hazy memories of bone juice than actually getting it out of my head. If you get what I mean. Uh, can you roll perception for me? Perception. Yeah, one sec. Uh, 17. Yeah, that's pretty good. So th- let me let me expand on this scene a little bit. Um, I, sometimes I see in the, the you know fandom, the community, people talking about like a, a hypothetical dice funk fighting game and like which characters would be included in which stages. Mm. I think this is like one of those classic uh, dice funk locations that would be great for a stage, mm. which is the... the the boat Hermes going down the river, you're fighting on top of the roof and the background is the different rivers, right? So maybe you start in the Phlegathon, the Styx, the Cocytus and up in the left. But the, the thing I want to kind of focus on here is the sky because you remember in the, the abyss arc, there was the, the roots coming down from the Yggdrasil and eventually they blocked the river. And that's when we met the Nidhogg. Um, but so these roots here are in the sky and you're not thinking about them much. They just are kind of like the clouds here. They're just a feature above you. But as you're going down the river with your 17 perception, I want to say you notice like movement consistently through them. Um, because after you blew the Galler horn, the Nidhogs went on a feeding frenzy and the sky is alive with Nidhogs. Oh, that's kind of like the the progression, right? In this theoretical fighting game stage, it's like you go from one river to the next to the next, and the sky just keeps filling up with nidhogs <laughs> in the roots. So it starts off barren, and then there's a couple, and by the last part, it's writhing. Like mm. after after a rainstorm, you go dig a hole in the ground, and it's just earthworms by the handful, and it's like it's so consistent, you don't even notice at first, but it's the whole sky is alive. Yeah. Why do the earthworms love the water so much? They're thirsty. Mm. Oh, okay. Uh, I believe it. I, <laughs> I, I think, I think, looking up at this, uh, Nifix is just gonna say, y- you know, 
as much as I would rather forget the fact that I've killed people who probably didn't deserve to die, or, you know, the costs I've paid and the bad mistakes I've made, I need to remember what led me to all that up there. Because look at, looking, looking at those all working away up there, I did this. I did something that's probably going to change the world, and I, I, I need to live with how I got here. Like uh, Sharon holds out her bottle of bone juice to clink it with whatever you're drinking. Uh, Nipix is also drinking bone juice and clinks it back. <laughs> so, w- <laughs> with that in mind, do you just drink yourself unconscious here, <laughs> you and Sharon? I, I, I don't think unconscious. I think we just. Enjoy looking up at, 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 at what I've done and continue trading back and forth stories of places we've been and things we've seen. Just just get to know each other a bit better. Getting lost in the sauce together. Getting lost in the sauce while I, you know, t- t- tell her about weird vaporwave video games that I found on the dark web. <laughs> so yeah, so Sharon's just like, yeah, so the one time there was this guy and he was trying to open a portal and sigil and you would not believe where I stuck these knives. You wouldn't think it would fit and then just <laughs> it just cuts away. <laughs> knives. So the question is, uh, how do the Furies find Jean? Walk me through this. Someone has cast fine Jean, I believe, and cast that. <laughs> I'm so, I, I, you know, I do. I just got it, but I'm out of spell slots. Okay, one of us is Deadpool. We look ahead in the script a couple pages and find out where we're supposed to go and head that way. Well, we we know presumably where you know she lives. We know you know theoretically where we last saw her. That's probably where they are now. My thought process would be. And this is ignoring everything else. Uh, I I would just go to Sharon uh, because she would know everything around the abyss. But I, I don't believe that's a possibility. So the party leaves the harmonium, goes over to Hermes, and there's just a giant hole in the ground. Like there's the foundation is gone. The portal's closed now. But that the building is just missing. And there's like people gathered around. There's like police tape and stuff. Uh, what is this? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, w- w- th- there's something else here, right? No, there was. I'm pretty sure it was a whole building. Remember when melted Ted's face? <laughs> oh yeah, melty Ted. That's right. Melted. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. I don't know what you want from me. I wonder if Sharon's okay. Hello? Is there an officer? We should look for this thing Lynette was telling us about. Ca- Calu? <laughs> Caligula? Calu- no, not Caligula. We don't need to look for him. Clues. Roll an in- investigation? Wow. What's a, what's a feeling? Uh, 21? Well, I crit, and then I had to do it with disadvantage, so I rolled a seven. Eight. Fourteen. Wow, these are some pretty bad rolls. So we got- Yeah, every time we need to find a clue. Weird how that works. <laughs> this is why we don't look for clues. It's fine, L- Lynette knows how to look for clues. You're just holding her back. <laughs> I think next season I should play a small blue dog, and that way I'll be really good with clues. <laughs> Who's gonna be salt and pepper and their child paprika, which is not how you make paprika. Mm, that's not how my science works. Um, so, okay, so Lynette was the only one who succeeded. The rest of the party drags her down by yelling and stomping on clues. <laughs> I, I love them when the dice support the narrative. Are you Steve in this hypothetical blues clues situation? Can you be the third Steve? Like, ch- Chuck, Chug, Chug? I don't know what they're called uh, anymore. Should Joe, who is, can I just do the mail? I just want to sing the mail song. <laughs> Can I be magenta? No, magenta Oh, yeah, sucks. magenta. No, I feel like I would be magenta. I want to be the big imaginary beast. I, not having had children and being of the age that I am, have no fucking clue what any of you are talking about. <laughs> I had a little brother. 
Okay. I want to be Bear in the Big Blue House. <laughs> bear in the Big Blue House. Oh, good night, Moon. Okay. <laughs> No, so, so, so Lin- Lynette is the only Good confident moon, person I at finding clues here. No, it's the, that's what the bear says at the end of the show. Oh. He says goodnight to the moon every day. Because Goodnight Moon is the name of a children's book. Yeah, sure is, bud. Okay, Lynette okay. tries to find clues. Everyone <laughs> sabotages her is what happens in this scene. <laughs> like, give me the clues. And I start thrashing around. It's kind of like how you run a D&D <laughs> campaign, Austin. Yeah, Lynette is basically my self-insert now. Um, <laughs> so you, you basically this this crime scene is totally fucking ruined, and you don't find anything from it. Uh, but you are all yelling, and so and drawing a lot of attention to yourself. And I think somebody who recognizes you walks over. It is a large man ferret. Uh, who does he recognize? Which one of us? Everyone but Blake. I think was in the race. All right, I remember this guy. I want to I want to push him off his mountain to the river. <laughs> okay, well there's not he's not on his mountain now. He's just coming to gawk at the stuff, but this is one of the mem- All right, then I'm pushing him just into the river then. So <laughs> one of the members of the Fang Gang, who is a gardenal uh ferret, is like I recognize you and it's like, "Hey, you, what are you doing here? Get out of here. This is our neighborhood." And the king just shoves him in a hole. That sounds right to me. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. As he falls, he's like, all right, I guess you don't want to know where it went. (laughs) Now you're... Now the hole is your neighborhood. Take that. All right, so the cops are going to come over. Do you guys run? (laughs) What if we all jump in the hole? Can we all jump in the hole? The hole doesn't go anywhere. I just want to jump in. So Lynette is going to put on her best, like, serious, uh, presentable voice and go... Hello, officers. I'm sorry. This is uh, 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 sorry for all the uh, chaos. Um, we 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 used to live in the area around here, and 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 everything. Uh, we're just really curious what's what's gone on, because obviously this is this is our neighbourhood. We're just uh w- wondering if you could uh, t- tell us anything about what happened. And is going to attempt to persuade them to give us some information. I mean, that's that's deception. Is that deception? Okay. Yeah. Deception. I'm pretty good at. That's fine. I mean, what is deception, but also persuasion? 18 on deception. All right, so you uh, the a cop walks over, his, his badge says, Officer Sism, Officer Raymond Sism, or Racism for short. Oh, no. Again? Oh. Again? They're like the Officer Jennies of the Dice Funk universe. <laughs> <laughs> Curse Jennies. <laughs> and he, uh, Lynette just starts to explain, he's like, hey, 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 I saw your friend push that guy in the hole. You just need to get out of here, okay? If you're not involved in this stuff with the, 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 the gnome and whatnot... Get out. You can just go watch it on the news. Come on. You sound like the Fang Gang, too. I want to push them into the river, too. <laughs> I will not stop this. All right. Everyone roll athletics to run from the cops. <laughs> I fly. Roll athletics to fly from the cops. Blake is it. walking away from the scene. He is not running from cops. Yeah. Yeah. Blake is immune to copo vision. Uh, eight on <laughs> 19. athletics. 19. <laughs> Oh, because you're winning. Uh, 26 and 19, uh, the group successfully runs from the cops, except for Blake, who just walks away because they can't recognize that he's related to them. Um, but all you really get from this entire thing at Sharon's place is the the cop did say, if you're not involved in the gnome thing, and I guess you can put together that Nifix was here, but that's it. You don't understand that Sharon is the, the lady of pain. You know, I bet if we'd all rolled better on investigation, we'd have found the little tag that just said Nifix was here. You, no, you'd you'd have you'd have found a you'd have found a little sticker that just said the word brand on it that had fallen off our, off of our laptop. <laughs> <laughs> or if the person who showed up to give us clues, we had just pushed into a river. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that was also a main yeah, thing. Yeah, uh, as, as you're running from the cops, Lynette's just gonna look at you all and go, "So, the next time." Don't push witnesses in holes. It doesn't help. There were, we, there were no clues. What else were we supposed to do? The person was the clue. The person can't be a clue. They're a person. I know there are only six episodes left, but a, a new running <laughs> gag is a new running gag of King pushing peoples in holes every time he sees them is an incredible <laughs> thing to invest in at this date. <laughs>
Okay, <sighs> so the party escapes from that scene. All you really know is uh, <laughs> Sharon and Nifix are on the run. They're so fucking stupid. I know. Oh, so, really? Are you just going to cut it all out? Because it makes the exact same sense. On the <laughs> no, I'm leaving it in. It's funny. <laughs> the entire thing could just go <laughs> away and nothing changes. We accomplished nothing. Hey, you found out that Nifix was there. Okay, we accomplished a very small thing. Which means you're really, you're really not far behind. Well, Nifix. I mean, but that so uh, that would establish that either Sharon is with Nifix or or Nifix has kidnapped Sharon. And if Sharon, I mean, come on, how powerful is the little gnome be at this point? Obviously, they're working together because there's no way Sharon would go against her will. So. Oh, uh, it's like, oh, she's wrapped up in that Netflix bullshit. I'm good. <laughs> it looks like a lot of hassle. The question is, uh, do you just go to the portal that takes you to the 69th layer where Lynette and Cordelia used to live? Is there, do, I could say any idea. I still have the magic Tupperware to contact Scar. Oh! Can I contact Scar and they might be able to get us a faster way to where Jean was? God, Chris, you're so good at this game. All right, so uh, after you're done running from the cops, you, like, duck into an alleyway, and King, like, rustles through his bag and pulls out the Tupperware. Uh, it was chilly, I believe, so it's stained red mm-hmm. in there. I was about to ask if it had the stains from spaghetti sauce or chili. It does, yeah. And so, uh, King, you just start, like, squ- squeaking it, <laughs> and everyone... <laughs> Lynette has never seen this Tupperware. <laughs> It sounds like you're scratching. Lynette, this is extremely confusing for you. You've never seen this type of where you don't know why he would be doing this. It's magic, I promise. I need the utmost concentration. <laughs> I mean, apparently, I, I'm, I'm just amazed that you have the patience and focus to scrub Tupperware, but not to ask a single question to a person who saw a thing. <laughs> like, I, 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 I love you all, but I don't understand you. Shh, it's okay. This is how we operate, and it has worked so far. I have not died. Oh, actually, I died like four times, <laughs> but I'm still going, so... Worked is a loose term. A voice comes from the Tupperware, and it says, Well, hello there. Hey, Scar! I guess I could just talk into this, actually. Yep, <laughs> everyone can hear me. Scarmiglione. We need, we need to find his gene back, but like a corpse version covered in purple stuff that hates us. Well, it's funny you should say, because there's been a recent infestation of real ornery flies down here in the abyss. How do we get to there? Can you draw us a map? With your words, a word map. Well, they seem to be mostly concentrated on the layers 69, 420, and 666. Nice. Nice. All the fun floors, basically. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so, I mean, we know where that one portal is. Uh, Any other advice? How are you? Any new fish species? I don't know. Oh, I'm doing very well. I went and bought myself a fishing boat, and I've been catching some demonic marlin. How big are they? Oh, enormous. Because regular marlin, they're pretty big already, but I imagine demonic marlin will be like, what, it's got to be cubed at least. Oh, yes. Prime material marlin are little bitches. Yeah, take that, (laughs) prime material marlins. I I I I I I'm imagining now there's a listener at home who who was very proud of the mall and they caught and is now like oh um yeah Scar says you want I should pick you up in my new fishing boat that'd be the best yeah that would be really cool I can give you three dollars in gas money oh that's all right all I want. Is company to fish with. Oh, okay. I like that. That sounds easy. <laughs> well, now, you gotta respect the power of the sea. Fishing ain't easy. Well, no, I meant it in, like, um, uh, emotionally, spiritually. It'll be 
Uh, not draining. Oh, yes. Fishing is a balm for the soul. A topical cream for the heart. Do you write poetry? Only about fish. You should publish it. I would read the, I would read the volume of fish poems. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I'll meet you on layer 69 then. Nice. Yes. <laughs> nice. Every, yes. Every time. Nice. You didn't even say it, but I know you thought it. Uh, so I think smash cut to the the layer sixty nine. Nice. We talked about it before as a, it's a red light district, basically. Nice. It's very lurid, a lot of like pink neon lights, and you're trying to get to Scarmiglione's boat here um, on the river sticks, but uh, the streets are choked with flies. Uh, this ah. this is more of an obstacle than a combat enemy. Why don't you all walk me through how you fight your way through just waves of flies that are sacred go- flame? Mm. Okay. So, uh, Lynette and Gustav, they're birds. How do they feel about eating well, them? I can roast them for you with my sacred flame. You love a roasted fly. I I I I think Gustav and Lynette are gonna be munching a few. All right. Um. So you injured your wing, so you're gonna have disadvantage on uh, acrobatics to loop de loop through the air eating flies. Um. Um. When I had my first hedgehog spike, sometimes I would just let him go in the bag of mealworms and go crazy. And I like to think that's what we're doing with Gustav. I'm just like holding him. When a small dog bites through the bag of dog food and climbs inside, it's good. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's a five on the first roll. Yeah, five, five, five is not great on acrobatics. Yeah, I got a six on dexterity to dodge the sacred flame. So Cordelia starts roasting flies, but uh, Lynette seems unable to catch them because of her busted wing. Although Gustav pitches in. Uh, King and Blake, what do you do? Uh, well, K- Blake's plan was to like stand behind Cordelia <laughs> as she sacred flames them <laughs> and work his way just hugging close. Oh, you can use my giant fan to try to fan them away. That'd be fun. <laughs> He's trying to push it back it's from not, the Not mind. using the spell in it, just like... Right, yeah, we didn't even know how to use the damn thing. You're just like, get. Yeah. Uh, I was just going to peck dance bravely into them, uh, but instead I'm going to use my greatsword and I'm going to take the fake lady a pain dagger that I have and I'm going to put that between my teeth and I'm just going to slash away at them. <laughs> With your mouth? What dance? You just went right by I that. was going to say peck dance. Like the idea of just be like, I'll just endure it. Da, 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 da. Oh, the pectoral <laughs> dance is still going. Okay. Oh, the muscle. Yeah, yeah. I was confused because I was like, wait, do I peck like a beak? Do you have a beak now? That's what I was thinking too. Okay, so King, why don't you roll an attack against the uh, the fly swarm? I crit. Oh. All right, that's what we're looking for. So King just starts, uh, well, why don't you describe what happens here? The, the street is thick with flies. Not anymore, because they're all getting shredded into fucking fly confetti, bitches. Oh, that's kind of fun. It's like a party. Like a party full of guts in fly pits. Celebrate good times. <laughs> Come on! So Blake didn't fight back and Lynette failed. So you're going to take some damage here. Okay. Okay. Oof. Big rolls there. 22 damage Ooh. as the fly... Yikes. Yeah? That's a lot. That's very rude. That's a lot of damage. Most of these flies are like baseball size they're much bigger than regular flies but they're not giant like gene was and so they're they're spitting acid on you and it's just more it's about more about the numbers than any one individual getting a great shot on you and they're just raining down acid on blake and lynette uh cordelia fries the one who come close and king dices the ones who come close as you fight your way through the streets uh to Scarmiglione's boat and you see he's standing on like a, a a fishing vessel I don't know if you've ever seen like those reality shows where people go out doing crab stuff uh like uh deadliest catch that's the name of it that's the one yeah so- I've been on one of those boats like, how was it one of the ones from the show um it was fine it was boat that's it's it yeah boat. it's, it's yeah. exactly that it's just kind of a boat it was boat does it have mosquito netting no Oh, why can't it be a fucking, what are the things they use in the Everglades? The fan boats? 
Yeah. A hydrofoil? What the fuck's a hydrofoil? Not a fan boat? I don't know a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> sort of a hover boat thing. The, oh, I was in, in the... Fuck, what are those boats called? They're called fan boats. Well, they're giant fan boats, and the, you use them in the swamp, and it makes me happy. The Wikipedia page is airboat. An airboat, also known as a fan boat. We call them fan boats in Florida. It's a the giant yeah, like, fan. It's kind of a Florida thing, you know. We just locally, we call them that, you know. It's kind of our thing. I wasn't expecting the Wikipedia page to be called airboat instead of fan boat, so. I always called it an airboat, so I'm glad. Really? That, that was what, yeah. Oh, okay. I, I always forgot. called them fan boats. Can there be demonic alligators just for my mental health there already was you fought them already in this season no now they're my friends <laughs> <laughs> they respect me now yeah cordelia has the respect of the demonic animal kingdom nice we're just like staring into each other's eyes god damn it uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the party rushes onto scar's boat uh they have their fiery whip uh it's a, it's a fishing rod slash whip made of fire so each each tip has a, a hook on it and they're just whipping the shit out of flies as you run onto the boat and scar Miglian says all aboard and the boat starts uh, floating down the river Styx here. So you're on a different river than Nifix entirely. And the abyss is on the absolute other side of the universe from hell. So it feels like, oh, they're both in the river. What if they run into each other? They One of them is in Russia and one of them is in South America. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> but they're both uh, in the ocean. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any, like, uh, mosquito netting? I guess the rivers of the underworld do have a large demonic mosquito population. We established that in the swamp level <laughs> earlier. Mosquito net. <laughs> mosquito net. Um, hmm. That's how we stop flies from getting us. Yeah, if Nifix was here, she could make a mosquito net out of her like gaming cords. Do any of you have any option to do something like that? I am a crafter. And what if he has fish nets? Like netting for f catching fish. Well, you make things out of people's bodies. I'm not going to give you the ability to make anything anytime, but you didn't uh, scavenge the Metatron's body on air. I always forget to do that. <laughs> you sure do. Last time I had Anastasia mail it to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so dumb. Okay, well, I uh, let's pretend I remembered. Uh-huh. And I stole, I don't know... His weird guts. <laughs> He's a mummy, so... Well, okay, everything else then, because there's no guts. Steal his wrappings! His sort of mummy wrappings. Yeah! Well, you said it wasn't that kind of mummy, Not right? that kind of mummy, no. He's a Sokushin Butsu, not an Egyptian mummy. Steal his skin, make like a little jerky net. Yeah, well, so I'll turn his skin into like yarn or something. I'm sorry, Laura, did you say <laughs> jerky net? <laughs> I didn't notice. Oh my god! <laughs> we were just gonna let her say "jerky net" with her human mouth, and nobody was gonna respond. Jerky oh. net. <laughs> That's the new fucking Slayer album, "Jerky Net." And there's the the album cover is a boat with a mosquito net made out of human skin. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that's what we're doing. Not even Slayer. That's a Cannibal Corpse album. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we're I mean, doing. In character for Let's in do it, character do it. for Lynette, I imagine that after being with uh, after being with Cordelia for this long, the ideas have got to come naturally. <laughs> oh dear. Um. So jerky net. <laughs> So a lot jerky net. <laughs> does whatever a jerky net is it gross? <laughs> yes, a lot. I don't even know where I was going musically. That was a great place to go. <laughs> Here comes jerky net. <laughs> Do I roll for that? Roll for jerky net. <laughs> <laughs> now I've said oh, I can't I've said it so many times. Now it sounds like jerking it. <laughs> jerking it with the jerky net. <laughs> This is too much for me. I roll with advantage for jerking it, right? <laughs> well, did you lose your jerking hand? <laughs> Holy that shit. is technically an attack, I believe. Yes. Wait, jerking it is an attack? <laughs> if you're doing it right. 
I, I feel like Lynette would have disadvantage. <laughs> what are we rolling? <laughs> On jerking it? I mean, I assume Lynette keeps her talons very short. <laughs> Two of the talons. Yeah. Lynette has eight sharp talons and two perfectly manicured short talons. Lauren, are you going to roll for jerky net or Is not? That my proficiency bonus. Fuck. <laughs> roll a die. <laughs> I just don't know what's appropriate for jerky net. Why are you edging us? Roll. <laughs> 23 is incredible. It's the best jerky net anyone's ever seen. <laughs> That's the start. It's the newest trend. Every boat. Next summer, jerky net. <laughs> Scarmiglione's like, wow, are you a demon? No. <laughs> well, you just made a household item out of someone's skin, you sick bastard. Hey. I mean, what did you think I fell for? Uh? <laughs> yeah. I mean... I'm a demon, and this is a bit fucked up, even for me. <laughs> okay, do you want to get spit on by flies till you die or not? Because I do not. That was very Borat. <laughs> <laughs> My net. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking lose it. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm like this. sorry i invented the jerky net <laughs> it really does sound like everybody's saying jerky yet. you know i'm just gonna i'm just gonna start watching the mule in the background then i don't think we're getting done this anytime soon <laughs> i'm literally laughing so hard i'm crying now all right, so uh, what is Scarmiglione's <laughs> what is Scarmiglione's boat called? Let's give it a fun name. Don't the say Jerky Net. Net. It's come on, you can't set us up. It is now the USS Jerky Net. Why would it be USS? <laughs> uh, the because the United States is hell. Clearly, obviously, duh. The USS Jerky Net goes down the river sticks. Wait, is it the USS Jerky Space Net or is it the USS Jerky Net? <laughs> Okay, the item Cordelia made is the jerky net. The boat is the jerk in it. And, <laughs> okay. And, and Scar called it that as a reference to when you have a fish on the line and you jerk <laughs> the pole, the rod. Oh, no. Right, right, right. Such wholesome intentions. Yeah, Scar didn't think of the implications. I don't think uh, they ever considered for a moment that it was inappropriate. Oh, my body hurts now. They're very wholesome. Um, so actually, some time passes here. I think in, in the the HBO series, there's a montage of Nifix and Sharon drinking on their river and the Furies, like, you know, goofing off, doing some, you know, shenanigans. I don't know if you guys want to add something to this. This is kind of a long, ten, uh, dangerous montage here. All of this talk of jerking is making me crave some jerk chicken. <laughs> I thought you were going to say it was making you horny. No, I want to eat. What's wrong with you? We got a chicken on a, a spit over a small fire, and just everybody's just cooking chicken. Yeah, we're just like <laughs> rubbing, rubbing some spice rubs on, <laughs> on a chicken inside our human flesh cage. <laughs> yeah, I guess that that is the juxtaposition: is Sharon and Nifix drinking, and the Furies eating. I don't know what that means symbolically, but that's what's happening. Um, and after a while, um, uh, at the end of this montage. Um, Nifix, can you roll for me a another perception? Uh, sure. Uh, seven. That's real bad. Yeah, I think maybe you you and Sharon get a little too turnt on juice, and you uh you take a you take a little nap, and so you you miss something happening on the ship. Um, I think the audience sees some hands grip the side of the 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 edge of the hermes's roof ah. Ooh. uh so back with the furies that's the end of the montage for nifix uh the furies you see up ahead on the river a giant cloud of smoke because you have reached layer 420 of the abyss <laughs> yeah we have this this entire layer uh, is just a giant smoke cloud. You know there's stuff inside of it, but you can't see any of it. Okay, so what music is playing? Uh, is it Sublime? Are we talking? 
That does sound like hell. Or Afro Man. You like Afro Man because he thinks you're hot. Yeah. <laughs> that is a bias. <laughs> that was a banner moment in my life. Um, both are acceptable. I mean, I currently work in a store that essentially is a giant head shop that just doesn't sell any actual like pipes. And I'll tell you, we play a lot of Grateful Dead. Oh, of course. Of course. How can I forget? And we are in the afterlife. So Grateful Dead, I mean, that is on the nose. See, but all I, was, all I can think of is Casey Jones. Yeah, he's my favorite Ninja Turtle. <laughs> Jesus. I'm Come not going to put it in the episode anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Because it's all licensed. What do you mean? You don't have the rights to Casey Jones, Austin? It's the Grateful Dead. They'd want you to use it. They would. If Jerry was still around, man, things would be different. The USS Jerkin it <laughs> plunges into the smoke cloud. <laughs> We're going to end the episode there, right? <laughs> Credits. I'm sorry. Just that's a sentence. Roll constitution not to get high. <laughs> what if I want to get high? Actually, I mean, you're immune to poison, so. Yeah. Oh, no, I can't get high. I rolled a 24. I'm straight edge. One time somebody messaged me on Twitter and they were like, so is Austin for real straight edge? Because he always sounds high. Oh no, I rolled a 20. <laughs> I don't get to get high. Damn. Well, no, you can I get rolled good a high. seven. Oh, Blake. I get to get very high. <laughs> so Blake's the only one <laughs> who gets high. <laughs> <laughs> You eat too many edibles? Can you feel your lungs? I, I, I feel like if Blake got high, he would look in like a river and see his reflection and be like, who the fuck is that? Quick, does anybody <laughs> have a primarily CBD pen to turn this high around? Yeah, what, what, Blake, what happens if you see your own reflection? We've never talked about this before. That's actually... He's never thought about it. Do you like longingly touch the surface of the water? <laughs> Oh god, is is this how he rides out his high for the first time thinking about his own face? Oh face? no! He just dives into the water like, someone's drowning, I have to save them! <laughs> bad trip, bad trip! It's like that Last Jedi scene where Rey sees all the reflections of Rey. It's like that for Blake. He's just seeing a thousand Blakes and it's just tripping him the fuck out. Yeah, he's probably just paralyzed, frankly. It's just... Right. I yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I have heard about people who may have like smoked marijuana you know for like a long period of time right and you know never really had a whole lot of effect on it and then one day they hit uh, a a water pipe or a bong i believe as the kids call them <laughs> oh my god and and then they take one hit off of that and it like unlocks something in their brain and maybe they then uh wind up paralyzed on the floor for four to six hours while some guy calls their girlfriend left breast because mm -hmm. that one's the little bit larger <laughs> oh See, I just had issues where I'll eat an edible and it was stronger than I thought because I also made the edibles, so I was licking the batter while I was making them. It's a very good way <laughs> to fuck yourself up. And I just can, like, feel my lungs, and then I have to lay down, and I try to sleep, and I'm like, I can't sleep. I feel my lungs. <laughs> okay. Well, all that's happening to Blake right now. Oh, no! <laughs> uh, everyone else in in the smoke, you hear voices. They're, like, giggling. <laughs> Do you guys have any snacks? And you hear someone say, Welcome to the magic circle. Okay, but the, are there snacks? Is that what makes it magic? Uh, dexterity saving throw for everybody but Blake. Blake, you automatically fail. Uh, dexterity. Yep. 20. Okay, so King and Cordelia pass. Uh, Lynette is the only one who takes full damage. 19 from acid as the flies in the cloud begin spitting at you. Um, and they're all giggling and they're, they're flying around you uh, in the smoke, invisible. What do you do? Um, are there holes anywhere around here? Holes? Holes. <laughs> holes. 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 As in like a stiff rod. <laughs> Holes. Um, Holes? Are, wait, H is in a horse, P is in pangolin. Specifically, uh, are there fly-shaped holes around here anywhere? Oh. <laughs> he was just wants to push the flies into the holes. <laughs> I want to Uzumaki these flies. I'm like, you belong here. <laughs> 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 
You could make one using the using one, and then that's the hole that you use for all subsequent ones. Yeah, I mean, roll, roll an attack to, I guess, push the flies into uh, into the river, maybe, or if you want to like gather them up in your arms and body slam them or something. Uh, can I do it with advantage? Tie them up in the jerky. Oh, I got it just a ten then, unless I could use like multiple attacks. I do get three attacks. No, I think, I mean, this is a very generous to even allow <laughs> this to be rolled for, considering how fucking nothing it is. <laughs> but, oh, oh. <laughs> you don't like Junji Ito? I, I do, actually. But, King, you cannot gather flies up that you cannot see and then throw them into a hole that doesn't exist unless you roll very high. <laughs> this is not the adventure of the USS jerking it that I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Lynette and uh, Lynette and Cordelia, what do you do about the flies assaulting the boat? I'm just gonna sacred flame in that general area. Six, they fail, and Cordelia just throws fire into the uh, into the clouds, and you just hear them screaming and dying. Sorry if you would not a fly, but also now you don't need a lighter. <laughs> uh, look- Lynette's going to follow suit and throw another sacred flame out as well, because, you know, squ- a couple goals. Ten also failed. So, the yeah, the, the the crooked girlfriends are just absolutely swamping the, the, the cloud with sacred flame. Oh, have you ever, like, noticed how, like, if you stare at a cloud for a really long time, <laughs> it just, like, makes shapes? Like, I'm seeing giant flies everywhere. <laughs> That's some seriously realistic high thoughts, because literally every time I'm like, do you guys ever think about how crazy it is? And then whatever is crazy (laughs) when I'm high. Uh, So Blake takes seven damage from acid because he's still in reverie, and uh, King takes seven damage from trying to gather them up to body slam them into a non-existent hole. Uh, But Cordelia and Lent fight them off, and Scarmiglione picks up their- If Scar had a car, I'm sorry, but it would be the Carmiglione. (laughs) <laughs> i mean you're not wrong but you shouldn't say it why i don't know <laughs> so uh the party cuts a path through the 420th layer and the boat escapes from the cloud as you hear the the screams of the dying behind you um nifix me who what what what's up um you are awakened by a moist hand Fl- oh. flopping over your mouth oh i don't like that no you don't and you look up and you see four figures do i recognize them you do uh one is a spiny devil one is an elf one is a secundus, and one is a slod. Okay. Okay. Uh, the slod is almost entirely purple, except for flecks of teal. Uh, the spiny devil has a purple around its throat. Uh, the elf is also mostly entirely purple. And also, yeah, now that I think about it, the Secundus is mostly purple. You you incinerated three quarters of these people. Yeah. <laughs> Only Hector got decapitated. Everyone else was, oh, was is, disintegrated. Oh, is this, is this my revenge uh, My revenge fight? This is the ghost of Christmas future, ghost of Christmas present. So, uh, Nifix has no context for what these are, right? For, like, who's who's bringing all, all the people she killed back? Absolutely not. As far as you know, this is a bone juice induced hallucination. But the New York Slod, Hector the Coroner, the Delivery Elf, and Simon are here for revenge. Although it he is. You didn't even give the Delivery Elf a name? <laughs> <laughs> he died? You didn't even name him? <laughs> I mean, he would have had a name if, you, if instead of murdering him, someone would have got to know him. Every character is potentially very complex and deep. But if you kill them before they get anything, then now they're just... Not me! Whoa, it's a New York slot! I'm back for round two to become everyone's favorite character! <laughs> it would work, too! They love you! No, no. Don't, don't bring this back to I killed a beloved character. Let's not reignite <laughs> oh, yeah. that debate. <laughs> I have deep complexities. Hey, I contain multitudes, though. 
<laughs> no, what thing. if like I was an onion with all them layers? Yeah, whoa, I'm developing here. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I ever tell you about my estranged relationship with my sister? <laughs> so it's the it's the New York slaw that has the wet hand over your mouth. But the zombie of Simon is actually the first one to attack. And he the, the zombified robot makes finger guns and just fires a shot right into your chest. Just like because you failed your perception. They snuck up on you and you get shot point blank in the chest here on the boat. That's that's less than ideal. I mean, this is going to hit when there's no real point in rolling for it, but in, just in case. Oh my god, I just said that. I rolled a 15. Uh, what, against my AC? Yeah. Uh, that is higher than my AC. Oh my god, good thing Nifix is such a squishy bar. That would be embarrassing if they missed at point blank range. Yeah, no, you you weren't far off, uh, off missing. <laughs> Uh, so, this is a zombie, so 18, which it's notably less than when Simon was alive. The zombies are not as strong as the actual people were, but I think, um, Sharon is probably, like, startled awake and tumbles out of her chair, but there's still, it's still gonna be a minute before she collects herself. What do you do, Nifix? The, the injury and, uh, and, and her response are gonna clue me in this isn't just me tripping. Um... So with with them uh with them showing up uh Nifix is going to summon in a giant crocodile to uh start fighting back. You mean Cordelia's best friend the the demon crocodile. Yes. Yes. yes! I summon I summon Cordelia's friend the demon crocodile. Finally some payoff. So yeah, so the crocodile just pops into existence on the top of this uh discotheque and just immediately starts gr- uh, grabbing onto Simon and doing the death roll which the audience should be familiar with from the last time we fought a crocodile this season, but they gra- they, <laughs> they just latch onto something with their claw- uh, with their teeth and just start spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning and tearing them into bits. Uh, so Simon's taken care of. Uh, so the New York slot, who has their one hand over your mouth, their other hand has uh, knuckle blades, and they try to slit your throat. 19 and 11, the 11's going to miss, the 19's going to succeed. Yep. Oh, I hit once. <laughs> Only eight damage. Oh, uh, but it... my damage wasn't great. What do you got though? <laughs> Gobble ghoul, the damage. If we keep saying New York slot. I'm going to actually think that's like a football team. <laughs> Uh, so the New York slot uh, stabs you, Nifix, but it doesn't get very deep as uh, Hector and the Delivery Elf are also advancing like zombies with their arms outstretched. Uh, what do you do? This Sharon gets to her feet and sees what's going on, but doesn't react yet. Okay, uh, Nifix is going to sort of uh, run away and sort of try and lure them over towards uh, so- so- something like an anchor, uh, something big and heavy on the ship's deck. <laughs> and as soon as one of the creatures gets close enough... Uh, she's just gonna start multiplying anchors to bury this thing. Alright, yeah, so, uh, the delivery elf, uh, I think is the one who would be most susceptible to anchors as a very skinny kind of zombie, and is buried under anchor- anchors and crushed. So that's, that's a, a very effective technique as far as zombie disposal, hundreds of anchors? Hundreds of anchors will do it. I mean, it's heavy on the boat. I think the boat like suddenly jerks in the water to one side as it becomes uh, unbalanced. But uh, sh- you also have the oar, so. Mm. So New York Slod and Hector are both going to uh, l- grab you and just start biting into you like zombies. Uh, right. Um. Uh, six, thirteen, twenty, and twenty-one. So only two of those hit. Nom 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 nom. Do it again. <laughs> 14 damage Nifix as they bite you on the arms and like the shoulder and then they're starting to go for your face uh this now Sharon is like fully in, into this fight now puts on the mask and just summons a uh cloud of daggers uh Nifix is gonna whip out the oar and uh create a big torrent of water attempting to push at least one if not both of them into the path of the blades just sort of Big uh, fire truck jet hose them into the blades. <laughs> yeah, uh, zombies are not very dexterous, so I'm gonna make a dexterity say. Oh my crit! Why do I even talk? Uh, so that's New York. Every time you say, "Oh, they're not very whatever," you crit. Every fucking every time. So New York slot uh, dexterously evades the water. Uh, no way! Are you fucking double kid- crit? Did both of your fucking zombies avoid my water? 
That is incredible. That's that's double back to back crit, huh? Hey, watch it. We're walking here. <laughs> um, nice one. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. So that I mean, Nifix, you're trying to wash them into the blades that uh, Sharon made, and due to literally two five percent chances, uh, they resist that. But then uh, Sharon is going to. Um, I th- yeah, I, th- I think Sharon is going to just run up behind one of them and push him into the blades. <laughs> so, f- fuck Hector specifically, I guess. Uh, so it's just the slard left. 21 and 10, only 21 hits. Uh, the New York slard bites you for six damage, I think, on the face this time. Um, 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 um. Thank you, Chris. You're a treasure. And then Sharon uh, once again summons uh, like a blade barrier along uh, on another side. So there's two different walls that you can throw the New York slot into. Nifix is at this point, I think, going to enlarge herself. <laughs> oh gosh! And attempt to just shove the slot into the blades. Yeah. All decorum out the window. <laughs> the New York slot has disadvantage because you're giant. Uh, nine, that's a failure. So uh, set this scene for me, Nifix. Uh, the New York slot's coming for revenge, uh, saying, you know, the, the rent prices, they're unbelievable. <laughs> and what you what do you do? Uh, Nifix is going to attempt to just pick this slot up above the head like a... I imagine there's a wrestling move of some kind where you lift someone over and then sort of give them a big drop down. Just doing that, but right into the blades. Mayor Bloomberg, forget about it. Uh, oh no, before I die, we're feeling all of my layers like mayflies we are. <laughs> <laughs> and the New York, the New York slot is uh, spiked into a, a whirring barrier of blades and explodes. Um, on the end of the boat, I think the crocodile finishes uh, tearing simon zombie into pieces unless you want to do something over there i i think nifix is gonna look around and just go how long was i out on 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 the bone juice because did did we did we roll into the river of people who hate me (laughs) is that is that one of the rivers there's the forgetting river and now here's the fucking remember river (laughs) Yeah, Nifix has no idea why that just happened. And the crocodile goes, <laughs> What does that mean? Sharon says, I, I think I think he wants I think he wants a name. <laughs> oh. 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 Chompers. Not not crocodiles, but do you guys know about I know Austin does, but everybody else. Have I told you about alligators when they when they hibernate? I'm a little bit certain we talked about this, where they freeze in the in the water with their snouts out. It's just very good, and I feel like everybody needs to know, because it's very cute. I'm glad I know this. See, Laura didn't know. So yeah, I now have my friend Chompers, who is just going to chill with me. <laughs> I, I literally just did that, because I like to imagine that eventually you summon Roy again, and Roy and Chompers are going to hang out. Oh my god. They're best friends. Oh my god, please. I'd watch that spinoff. So, Nifix, you're under attack and you don't know why. Yeah, so I'm assuming that Nifix gets confirmation this is not, like, a side effect of the river we're in. Yeah, so I think next episode we'll maybe be thinking about why that happened, but yeah. back with the USS Jerkinet. Uh, so you find another... Uh, so you're going down the river Styx. Um, if you'll recall, there was a question in... That's uh, during the, the first Abyss arc about whether to go down the Cockatus or the Phlegathon to get down to the le- level 666. I assume you take the Cockatus again because you know that it's safe except for the Nidhogs, who are your friends. No. Let's take the other one. You have it prepared, no. right? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, because I, the, 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 this... I think the Discord would riot if we passed up the slime path twice. <laughs> Oh, you're, there's no reason to go down the, the slime path. That's an entirely other difficult thing that was equivalent to the spider difficulties. <laughs> I want to see what happens, though. But it has the word cock in it. 
Sorry, sorry, Lime. We wanted to see the uh, the cut content. Hey, hey, maybe <laughs> one of you can make a deal with your soul on the line, and you go down a bad path to sort it. Whoa, whoa, that Lynette is very touchy about this all of a sudden. No, nah, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Uh, what I was going to say, though, is, you know, when you go through the cockatiss, it goes very close to the roots hanging into the water. If maybe one of you wanted to contact uh, Calliope to check on her, there was some talk before about. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. She's you're her favorite. You do it, Blake. <laughs> yeah. So so how do you get attention? How do you get attention from the Nidhogs? You can just look up in the sky. You see the, the roots are crawling with them. Oh, that's a lot going on up there. Are you all looking at you seeing that with the? Do you think Maro is okay? Do you think our lair's gonna be okay? Oh, our lair! Oh, we can make a new lair. I suppose. But they'll have to make a whole new shave and the haircut sign. <laughs> you can't just buy those pre-made. They have to make it. Maybe your lair is just gonna get bigger. Like maybe if they just like eat out the back wall and make an extension for you. I love to eat out the back wall. Boom! I was mid-sip of water when you said that, and I had to swallow it so quickly to seal that. (laughs) I thought I was going to fucking die. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, fuck. Mm, Calliope! All right, so you just yell. I was just expecting someone to, like, shoot up a flare or something, but if you just want to yell. Oh, we have flares now? The magical world we're in. Everybody but King has cantrips you can do infinitely. But I can't. You have a cell phone. That's absurd in this world. (laughs) You have a Tupperware. What else do you want? (laughs) You can't push flies into walls or holes. I can't have cell phones. Uh, This is a fantasy world. What would happen if you put the flies in the Tupperware? You put the flies in the Tupperware. You drink them both up. Else is bringing stupid energy today. Besides, <laughs> just, just, just me, because I felt real weird there for a minute. Okay, so the party is just screaming up at the Nibhogs long <laughs> enough until someone gets Calliope's attention and she comes down, hanging down from the roots in her full, you know, 20 foot long worm form. And she says, Hi. Okay, we're on the mission. Hi. Hi, we're on the mission. I can't hear you. You're so small. We're on the mission. Oh, is Nifix with you? No, we haven't seen her for a while, but she's got weird things going on, apparently. Why, have you seen Nifix? Yes. She told us we needed to eat the tree up. Not all of it, but a bunch of it for her plan. She didn't say what her plan was. Didn't I? I thought I gave them some degree of plan knowledge. No, you just said you had a plan and for for it to succeed, you needed their help. You explicitly did not share it. Because here's a thing that has been implicit the whole time. I don't think anybody's ever said out loud. You killing the tree will kill the Nidhogg's only source of food. You're you're going to extinct this species. Uh, Oh. Yeah. Uh. Uh, is Maro up there? Is he okay? Oops, I did a genocide. <laughs> <laughs> the audience was right. I am the monster. No, the audience is never right. I would say that like there's a good argument for the believers, a good argument for the Aethar, a good argument for the Doom Guard. Uh, but the thing that actually makes Nifix yeah, of villainous. course you would, you centrist motherfucker. Yeah, Damn. I'm just. <laughs> I think the thing that actually makes Nifix villainous is. The, de- the actually the the extinction of the Nidhogs. That's the only thing she's doing that I don't think is defensible, and the thing that ultimately that Blake and Cordelia will not let stand. In in my defense, there's a lot of tree to go around, and they're gonna have a lot of tree for a very long time. Uh, have you seen Maro? Is he okay? Do you have him? Give him to me. The Ratatosks are very angry. Yeah, they love the tree. We're fighting them. Don't fight them, we're friends! Actually, the Ratatosk and the Nidhogg are mortal enemies, we're only- Okay, but think about it this way. I am- we are the bridge to gap this divide. Yeah, we were only hanging out because we were both friends with you. Yeah, so now we're all friends and we do not fight or ruin evil lairs. When- when do you- when do you plan on stopping eating the tree? When we get to the heartwood. 
What does that even mean? I don't know anything about trees. It's the part of the tree that actually will take real damage. So the outside part will grow back. Why don't you just, like, take a break? Uh, can I make an arcana check to <laughs> realize the implications of this? Uh, it's that nature. Nature? Sure, that's good. Okay. I get that's fine. I'll... Fine. I will also do nature because I have a plus 10 to that. 20. Oh, botch! Of course you did. <laughs> uh, okay, so here's uh, what I'll say. Uh, Blake, um... Blake, with a 20, you understand that the, the Yggdrasil is essentially invincible, except for a couple of specific things. Nid Nidhogs can bite through it, and you met a conduit once, the locust one, right. which could eat through it. But besides that, it's essentially invincible, and even if it is damaged, the, the bark can grow back. Not a big deal. Only the heartwood is actually vulnerable. This is a real part of a tree. I didn't make this up. Um, but if Nithix specifically wants it exposed and went through the trouble of stealing the Gallarhorn... Uh, I don't know that you can understand the full extent of her ambitions, but it seems extremely suspicious. And you also were there when she sided with tragedy. Right. So, I mean, that does give you apocalyptic vibes, I will say. Yeah. And then, of course, the cop said that Nifix was with Sharon. And I think you, Conrad, out of character, like joked about Nifix taking Sharon hostage. So maybe that's what you think's happening. Like, right. maybe Nifix is just fucking snapped. Yeah. I, I I will like uh slightly out of out of things. I think Nifix's understanding of the whole uh yeah, the Nidhogs are potentially eating themselves into extinction here, but like they told her, here's what you gotta do for us to eat the tree. Here is a prophecy we all know about where we're all supposed to eat the tree. Eating the tree and eventually dying out is what we're meant to do. Which I think is Nifix's defense of well, this is a thing they're prophesized to do anyway, so I'll let them do the thing they're waiting around to do. It's so so. It's kind of like it's kind of like. Um, let's say you thought that the second coming of Jesus Christ was going to come about because of a war started in the Middle East, and, and so, so you move therefore, the embassy. yeah, yeah, you support Israel in the hopes that it will further drive conflict and start a war. The premillennial dispensationalism is now a theme <laughs> in our podcast. Hell yeah! <laughs> I really know what my bosh gets me i i will say these worms literally said here's where you go get the horn you should go if you go blow it we'll eat the tree yeah i was gonna say that part of the tragedy of all this is that when you talk to calliope she said her dad was psyched because that was what the nidhogs were always supposed to yeah. do this is like their destiny which and ag again is a big part of why i think nifix doesn't feel bad about that part of what she's doing yeah, it part of it is the the Nidhogs' own culture and being complicit in this. Um, obviously, Calliope is a naive child; she didn't mean anything by it. But she is also a victim of their culture, which we could have explored more in this. I will say that Nidhogs, um, the, what we have about them written in text form, is only uh, we only have existing texts about Nidhogs uh, that were written after. Uh, contact with christian missionaries so they have always had like an apocalyptic element that what may not have been in there in traditional norse mythology maybe i'll cut this out nobody gives a shit but i actually no, think it's really interesting i i think there's something here that isn't just like oh nifix accidentally is doing an extinction there's like an element of this where it is the nidhogs own uh buy-in on what they're supposed to do and what nifix is trying to do is break people out of what they're supposed to do you know, so it's like a, an ironic fate for them because they're also trapped by the system, not even just the system of alignment, the systems of expectation. She, she's she's essentially killing off an entire species whose whole point is to wait around for something they're supposed to do in a, as part of her attempt to bring around a world where nobody is forced to do what they're supposed to do. Yeah, that's a, that's a thing. And in the symbolism of the season, like the the seven deadly sins, like we talk about Cordelia is lust, um, I, Cicero is greed, Blake is sloth, Cato is wrath, Matilda is envy, and Nifix is pride. The one missing, the one missing is gluttony, which is the Nidhogs. Yeah. So it's their own gluttony for the, for the tree, yeah. which is their undoing. Um, any, but, any, anyway, what did Cordelia get for that botch? Uh, Cordelia, Finally. Cordelia, with your botch, you become obsessed with the uh, your evil lair and thinking it's going to be destroyed. It's actually totally safe. They're not eating that part of the tree at all. Ah, it works so hard. <laughs> so Cordelia is inconsolable. Ah. 
Uh, but you've gotten confirmation that Calliope is okay. You understand that the, the Nidhogs are at war with the Ratatosk, and maybe you can help there once you solve this Lime thing. Uh, you also, uh, Blake especially, is convinced Nifix has snapped. Yeah. Um, but up ahead is the ruins of the castle in the 665th layer. So Calliope says goodbye and goes back to help the war effort against the Ratatosks. Is there a different plural? I bet that's not the correct plural for Ratatosk. Ratatoskai. Ratataskers. Big rat babies. Big baby rats. Nice. Uh, so the, the USS Jerkinet reaches the shores of the castle. And I think even from this distance, you can see there is a, a, a ginormous, a gargantuan fly standing in the ruins of the castle. I think Scarmiglion says, well, I'll take out the little flies if y'all want to focus on the big one. She seems angry. You're a you're ride or die kind of bitch, <laughs> Scar, and I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, Scar throws up a gang sign and pulls out their fiery whip. Um... The flies are circling now, and I mean, Jean is just a zombie out for revenge. She doesn't have any big villain speeches here. What do you do? Uh, you're not going to even give her the surprise bitch you thought you'd seen the last of me? I mean, it's an emotional surprise bitch you thought you'd seen the last of me. I thought about giving all of the, the Pope zombies like personalities and stuff, but it, it felt like too much like regular resurrection, and that's that's not doesn't fit with Pope's powers. Hey, you suck. You sucked before and you suck more now that you're not even like the real gene. So you should just go back to bed. As Cordelia says that a giant black gate opens above the party and uh, rubble from the castle begins falling through it. So she opened one black gate in the rubble and one above you and rubble just, you know, like a portal system starts uh, raining down on you because that is remember her conduit is to some of these black gates to bring things through dexterity saving throw everybody crit oh can i like uh, catch catch something 13 and throw it at her? uh so it was 15 so blake passes and cordelia passes but king and lynette do not oh my god these rolls only 10 to the failures five to the succeeders as most of you get out of the way of the rubble uh what do you do just like before, weak sauce. Can I like shadow of the Colossus, like climb up and stab it in the eyes? <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. I'm gonna climb up and then I'm just gonna stab that fly in the eyes. Just like stab, 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 stab. Fly eye. All right, so King is stabbing. You can roll damage. Who else has something they want to do? I'm gonna cake knife her in the guts. Oh, so you're gonna you're gonna use your Mystic Arcanum to cast Flesh to Stone? Yeah. Yeah, because I haven't done that yet. So uh, I feel like this is appropriate because I hate her. I rolled a three, so she failed. And because it's your cake knife, uh, you only need two successes to win. So yeah, King, you're stabbing Jean. Uh, I mean, also Cordelia, you stab Jean. Uh, Lynette, I, this isn't technically how it works, but Lynette, if you want to use your Mystic Arcanum to cast Flush to Stone, I'll stack them. Yeah, I, I think I think that's what Lynette's gonna do. Um, I think in order to get a good angle to take the shot, I think um, because she's currently got a bit of a busted wing, I think um, Gustav is gonna try and help uh, stabilize that side so she can fly in and get another flesh to stone going. Oh, oh I kind of so well. Behaved. I crit on the resistance of that. Oh no! You, you're getting so many crits against me today. They're all against me. That's the third crit against Laura specifically. Weird. Uh, Blake, what are you doing? Uh, Cordelia is still turning at her stone, so... Does it, it, does it have functioning wings? Yes. The, 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 um, the major damage on Jean was her head, where the pickaxe went through, and then inside of her, where the fire was shot. So, actually, most of her body is intact. She was really only purple on the head wound, and I guess inside her guts where you can't see. Okay, so Blake's also going to try to climb on its back, but rather than doing a stab, he's going to specifically use Thorn Whip to try and shred those wings. Brutal. To reduce its mobility. Uh, are you still, did you get a different sombrero? Because the temple fell on you, I assume damaged your hat. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, uh, he, he would be wearing a, a knit cap at this point, because he was on that <laughs> fishing <Beanie>. boat. <laughs> I love that. Uh, so Thorn Whip, do you roll or do I roll? Yeah, it's an attack. Um, 
25. Yeah. You uh, thorn whip up onto Jean and start pulling her down to the ground. I guess if you specifically grapple onto her wings, you can keep her from escaping. Um, now it's Jean's turn, and she is going to uh, send out uh, a, a special version of her ray of sickness, but on everybody. She's going to do like a very wide beam of necrotic energy against everybody. Where is she so, firing out of? Huh? Where is she firing it out of? Uh, her proboscis? I should have cut those off. Yeah, I mean, you don't get to decide that the way D&D works. So. No, no. I think I do. Okay. <laughs> dexterity save everybody. Is it really dexterity or is this kind of Seven. more of like a constitution sort of thing? What if I just stopped answering when Chris talked? <laughs> I'm alone and sad. I got a 19. Uh, I got a five again. The rolls are not going in my favor today. I don't like these rolls today. So everybody fails but King? So you should have you should have yeah. sassed Austin. That's what got me that extra power. 29, 29 to everybody, 14 right, to King. Hold on. You said 21 first. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, no. That, <laughs> that is, it's like chess rules. You took your hands off the piece, so. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's the damage that goes through. <laughs> Eat my shorts, <laughs> dude. Uh, so that's uh, <laughs> poison damage on everybody. And I'm going to roll against the uh, flesh to stone. That's a five. So that's one failure. One more and Gene dies. So this is working yeah. pretty well. Uh, Cordelia, what do you do? I just want to like shoot a sacred flame into the stab wound I'm giving her. Failure, seven. So you just hit her with sacred flame in the place where you killed her with sacred flame last time. Lynette. Uh, I'm going to attempt to use Blight. Uh, she is resi- she is immune to necrotic damage. Oops. Well, then Lynette attempts to Blight this thing and d- does not do anything with that because, oops, n- ne- necrotic. Good job, my little pudding cup. I'm proud of you. Hey, at least I remembered to not throw people down holes when they had clues. <laughs> I mean, no, I was being sincere. Did someone say hole? Oh, God. Was there a gene hole? Oh, there's a giant hole nearby. Oh, no. <laughs> Is he, like, vibrating? It's got to find the hole. King, what do you do? Oh, I'll push Gene down the hole. Uh, strength contest? I mean... To be fair to Chris, there is a giant hole, so... (laughs) No, I agree. She's got a... Nine. Come on. Fifteen! Yeah! Down the hole! Down the hole! Down the hole! Down the hole! No, keep doing it. Just like the wire, way down in the hole! I mean, Blake, do you want to add anything as... uh, Okay, so you ripped her wings off with your uh, whip, and then she's starting to... to, Her her flesh is turning to stone. She's going to be a giant fly statue, and then King just shoves her in the hole. Do you do anything, or do you just watch this? <laughs> I have, like, a cup of tea. Am I still high? <laughs> I think the best way to end this would you be being still a little high. No, I mean, that's what he's saying. Am I still high? <laughs> this hole's perfectly fit for her! <laughs> <laughs> we all do love Ju- Junji Ito here. Ten, she fails the, the flesh to stone and fully turns into stone as the body tumbles into the 666th layer of the abyss, which is infinite. So she will fall. Bye, bitch! She will fall forever. <laughs> I can't believe King's whole obsession paid off. What the fuck? <laughs> Chris is a genius. <laughs> that is, uh, that's what you call payoff. Thank you for, yeah. thank you for turning her into a rock, dear. <laughs> this trait will never be mentioned again in the future episode. <laughs> All right, so you're all standing around this pit. Uh, Scar Miglione finishes off the flies and says, A good job, everybody. Well, that was really easy. I feel like it's a trap. Was that all you came down here for? No, she, we're assuming there is a child somewhere. Well, yeah, we were supposed to, you know, be going to find them to find out where the other person was. I think that was it, right? We were supposed to interview her? We forgot again. No, there's someone that was really wants revenge on Cordelia, and they'd have the key to where to find Lyme in the Astral Sea. 
Okay, so can uh, I'm gonna let's dig through the guts. Do, 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 do. Did, oh, I know the did, hole. Did, 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 did we just drop the clue to finding Lime down an oh, infinite no. hole? Austin <laughs> knew this the whole time. Scar Miglion says, well, I don't know about all that, but thank you for saving the abyss. Nobody else in the other planes cared about our fly problem. Yeah, no worries. Could you help us find our daughter in the Astro Sea? That's kind of like fishing in a way, isn't it? I've never been to the Astral Sea. Are you sure this was the right person? No, well, I don't know. Was it Cordelia? I thought I thought it would have been. Um, they're back alive and made of purple, which to me says they're the right person. Try to think of everybody you've killed recently, and who we haven't already killed again. There's a lot. <laughs> I mean, she's out most nights. Oh, yeah. Well, anyone you left alive who's maybe sworn vengeance upon you and your family. Lancelot? No, we did that already. <laughs> uh, he, I mean, he he is a little bit. Anyone could... maybe like you killed a significant other of and there'd be someone maybe seeking revenge on you? Uh, is it the Jessica? Who? Who's Jessica? You remember Jessica uh, with the multiple disrespects. <laughs> uh, her name Multiple disrespect. I don't think her name is actually Jessica But we killed her husband And then we like Caused a scene at his funeral And I may or may not have said that I was his mistress Which I was not I have standards But uh, Oh 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 her Oh Yeah her Oh you know I I hadn't even really thought about her. Where, would, where did she even live? Where did she even go? Nobody cares about this bitch. Well, I, I mean, presumably she would have gotten something and, you know, in the... She would have received something from the estate of the executive that that she was married to. I mean, they were only married for a few hours, but the, the contract okay, is... Uh, no, I mean, like, and let's be real, I don't think it was a marriage for love, right? Well, uh, no, probably not, but uh, chances are she's living in their house. Oh, yeah, that's where they lived from. Okay, well, do you know where their house is? Well, I could find out, though. That wouldn't be hard. Uh, Blake reaches into his uh, pocket and pulls out, his, uh, pulls out Cicero's coin. <laughs> this will really piss him off, actually. <laughs> For you to draw, I'm a shapeshifter. Have no face to show. Please don't take off my mask, my disguise. February 2020. February. What did I say? You said, no, you said it normal. I'm just being stupid. Bernie 2020. Don't get my hopes up. Listen, I have to live for something. Otherwise, what do I have? A D&D podcast and a bunch of dog pictures. So what <laughs> I was is- literally going to say dog pictures. <laughs> There's nothing else that I'm living for. Okay, we got to get to the credits executive producers for February 2020. I forgot my names list. Where'd it go? How'd you lose it? Joseph Tumbrello is the first one. I'm pretty sure the next one is X Dillers, but hold on. It sure is. Oh my God, I have such a good memory. The Walt Disney Company. Is that real? Uh, I mean, obviously not. <laughs> okay, so what he did do it? You're so gullible. <laughs> I'm so gullible. What the fuck, man? I used to get checks from the Walt Disney Company, though, because they owned uh, Blip TV, or they owned Maker, which owned Blip, and I worked for Blip. So I, I have gotten Disney checks before. It's not weird. Okay. 
<laughs> she doesn't sure. care. I don't care. Brent, still every episode of Dice Funk Goatly. Devin, conduit of evolution. Evolution. John Madeira, conduit of caramel lattes. Rob Dakin. Ah! Cider <laughs> of Rob Nightkin. Ah! Paul Mullen. Inspired by all these PhD patrons. Inspired by all of these PhD patrons, I'm getting a degree in what the heck. That's, there's worse reasons to go back to school. Yeah. I heard people on a podcast doing it. R.I.P. Chip, human fighter and pal of Harkin Caleb, eaten by an ank egg. What's that? It's like a big D&D insect. Ugh, don't like it anymore. Toshiro Kuro, who's not a bug because we're going to stop talking about... Oh, I skipped Christman. Christman, stealing Cupid's bow so that people can love me again. That seems like an abuse of your power. Toshiro Kuro fighting the new year, the new year's new me for dominance. <laughs> Andrew Grothen. Belated birthday, Jamie, because Patreon messed up last month. They really do do be like that. Dr. Goatman! Francois V. Heaton Master. Oh, I think this one's for you. I don't want to read this one. Hold up. My dildo just fell out. Don't look at me. No, no. Good slave. JK. <laughs> I like to think that was a response <laughs> to the last one. John what? Uh, Luther Manhole. I really hope that's a, <laughs> your name and I'm not being mean and making fun of it, but <sighs> shouldn't it's have great. even brought it up. <laughs> Uh, Nephis Decidia is sheep with crushingly low self-esteem. No. What does sheep have to be upset about? They're soft. That's what I was going to say. I was like, they're cute. They're soft. They make good noises. Fresh air. Friends with dogs. Possum King. Yeah, they get to hang out with dogs. <laughs> <laughs> they do. I want to be a sheep. Possum Kingdom refugee. Random. Conduit of would you like a hug? Sternod. Vinny, conduit of Valentine's chocolates made with my own quotation mark essence. Is that jizz? Do not enjoy. I'm pretty sure that's jizz. The Z23619. Kevin Dobbins. A lonely gambling pig trying to be King's Valentine. Aww. Aww. Charlie Chocolate upped his pledge because he felt bad about that tongue twister. <laughs> That's my new strategy is guilting the, the patrons and trying to see if they can get up the list. Pumpkin Spice itself. Robert Tuttle. Anthony, patron of Dora. Morgan Rapp. Antonio, conduit of aftercare snacks. <laughs> nice. Foot gummy. <laughs> <laughs> Foot gummy. Haley Anderson. Pinko Sock. Philip Busman. Sheave, talking shit on a tubular floating crane. <laughs> Do it. Tis I, Zenster. 69 Spoopy 420, Sean Bylorn's nudes. Ludes. I said nudes? That was Freudian. I mean, that's also accurate. Mm hmm. A montage of goth nifix staring out into the rain. A non horny gift for Austin and a very horny one for the goblin. <laughs> A werewolf with the Chinese menu in his hand. Triple A? I guess just get to the top of the alphabetical part. Or, ah! Yeah, ah! Isaac, conduit of Linux, mascot Tux the Penguin. Aaron Norgard. Abigail Grace. Adrian Y. Aftershock, too busy planning an art expo to update Patreon name. You could have used the time <laughs> changing it to that to change it to something else, though, instead, so... Time management skills. I don't have them either. It's fine. Agent Hedgepiggle. Aggressively weeping and eating ramen. Oh, yeah. That's the stuff. Aggressively? <laughs> have you never seen me go into a full sob, my dude? Yeah, No, there's, I mean, there's powerful weeping, but aggressive seems like, it's like if getting closer and closer to someone while doing it. <laughs> aggressively weeping. Haki <laughs> Sabalainen. Alex Vepra. An otter wanting to be a valentine. Okay. All of otters in my Valentine. They would eat you, though. I've had worse holidays. <laughs> Aki Savalainen. I just said that. I want to talk about otters again. Andrew Birmingham. <laughs> Andrew Feji. Feje? I feel like we've been told. I'm so sorry. A hundred times. <laughs> Conduit of the blood. What is it, though, Austin? Fe 
Just shit. Fuck. <laughs> God damn it. God do it the bloodiest of Valentine's itself. Anna. Anna, conduit of procrastination. Arachnavolt. Searching for the spider Gallahorn to summon the horde. Love a horde. Of spiders? With their daddy long legs. Because they're cute. There's, those aren't spiders. They're just close enough. I got you. I got you oh, out there. Shut up. Large <laughs> balls. <laughs> <laughs> Five armed hugging cactus golem. Oh, too pokey. Ariadne resolving vengeance on Theseus 2020, which is weirdly relevant to this arc. <laughs> Arjan de Koenig. Ash, the gayest bitch in the Midwest. Austin! Still love that Skeksis voice. Isaac, Kanye, go, 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 go. Be Dodroid. Bedodroid. Bedodroid. Becky to. I talk to Becky all the time, and I don't know if it's Tooth or Tooth Hill. I'm sorry. Property of Janiac. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a new strategy. If you don't know how, don't even try. I just said it both ways, so. I've heard it both ways. BJ, conduit of manager. Manager. Manager giant space hamsters. <laughs> I'm imagining one like in a McDonald's uniform now. B Ray Echo. Before we continue. I gotta say, I got tiny slimy nips. Big time Getty Lee, member of Big Time Rush. R.I.P. Neil. Neil. Poor enough for Neil. I mean, he really did just die. Oh. Well. Neil Pert of Rush. Well, pour one out then. Yeah. I mean, they did have slightly libertarian leanings, which is uncool, but he's obviously one of the most talented drivers who ever lived. So you win some, you lose some. <laughs> Blackstone Morgan. Hey, I know him. He's a good friend of mine. Blue six bones. I know it's bone ass, but I like to say it bones. Bone trost, bone trost, ghoulie, undead nation secretary general. That 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 reference is f- way before you were born. Okay, because I don't, I don't get it. I was like two, I think. <laughs> Hold on, this is time for a googly. I'm gonna keep saying words. Brady, god of murder, survivor of Lauren's massacre. I didn't do it. Brett, bro, Jimbo, buy a girl some flowers? Question mark. Callum, monster garbage. Turner, Cameron Abbas. I'm on my own here, folks. Boutros Boutros Ghali was the sixth Secretary General of the United Nations from 1992 to 1996. So yeah, I was six. I was born in 92. Yeah, I knew that person existed, but I was like, yeah, that was like when I was a kid. That's fun. That's a fun fact. <laughs> you don't seem like you're having fun. I'm having fun. You're the one who's not laughing at any of my jokes that are not bad. Because I was looking up the UN Secretary Generals, a very important thing for this credit. Getting high on knowledge. Uh, I know I said Callum Monsieur Garbage. Turner. Cameron Abbas. Candace, listen to Dice Funk Starling. Caridwin, conduit of crushing on Austin in a respectful, non horny way. Chief Beef Thief. Chloe the dog finds bone pile on her walk. God, you love to see it. They do. Chris, conduit of bad decisions, walling. Christopher Charlow. Coho Blast. Corum is going to miss Smash Fiction. Thank you for being wonderful. Counterfeit. Cucumber. Dandy Snuff. Danielle Marsden, conduit of unnecessary consonants. Daria, go freaking right. Dawning Frost. Daz is lost. Me oh, too. that's what that is. I thought it was just Daz is lost. Daz is lost. <laughs> Deathworm Jim, sharing the adventures of Harley and Pancake as a weak fac. I don't know, faction? Oh, that's a facade. Hmm. Those sound like animals. Yeah, Pancake is an incredible animal name. Yeah, food and then just regular people names are the best animal names. Decibel! Declan Sands. Dennis Pancake Detlifson. Dice Fuck. Dungeons and Dildo spinoff for dogs? <laughs> Wait. Oh, why for dogs? I thought it was just like a horny spinoff, but. Uh, I guess 
Dogs can have little bit have little a dildo as a treat. <laughs> Austin. <laughs> what? I don't know. DM Tao. Now I have to do a player of shenanigans. My brain is broken. Don Johnston. Dorian, conduit of devotion. Doro. Doctor Izix. Dragon Nexus. Duck, conduit of stealing your V-Day chocolates, then blaming the dog. Dogs can't have chocolates. Dylan and Rylan, or Dylan and Rylan. I'll never stop saying it that way. The dog, listening on a lazy Sunday morning, also dishes. Dylan, conduit of gift pants. Ebrand, toss a coin to your Lomo O titty of plenty. I still haven't watched it because Lauren took my Netflix. It's. I don't know why you keep saying that. Because maybe if I keep saying it, you'll give me Netflix. <laughs> I, I don't have my own. I, what are you even talking about, you ding dong? Eowolta. Ikorin. Elder dog. Elderly goose. Condit of doing the best I can in 2020. Eleanor Nanante sees Perichin, hort vampire lady with depression. Aline? You. Yes, you are a jellical cat. I'm Mr. Mistopheles. Elizabeth Jackalope. Elusive Lily. Emma, Math Tiger is 43.47% correct. And Diego Vandane. That's not a very good Math Tiger if they can't even get over 50%. He's a tiger! Let him live! I guess that is good for a tiger. Erwin Leilagadek. Evie. Evie? We'll find out later. Connor will trying out a new name in the credits. Even if we find out later, we won't we won't get it right then as well. <laughs> Fair Majesty, Empress Quintilian Galaxion. Oh, I'm so glad I just read ahead. Faith and Valor, formerly transient passerby. <sighs> <laughs> I was so excited. <laughs> All lowercase, no spaces. <laughs> Filmquisition. Fists are the natural predators of puppets. I don't like that sentence. I think they're more like symbiotic. They need each other. <laughs> it's not a predatory relationship. <laughs> Florian H. Follow Slad Bible on Facebook. Francois Arsenal. Frank Sands. Furries come infecting the credits prison. A futuristic ferret-based society. That's what the new Star Trek should have been. That's Austin's ideal world. Mm -hmm. Ginger beers. Got more soul than a sock with a hole. Is that a lot of soul or like none? I have literally no idea what that means. It sounds like vaguely sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Grapefruit juice. Although I say that about any time someone incorporates the word hole. I'm just like, mmm. <laughs> Graffiti. Conduit of rhetorical vacillation. GSV underscore lasting damage. Halju. Harley the floral. Lyricat. Harrison Andrew. Harry. Dad King getting high ratings from the scalies. It's a very scaly season. Hey guys, it's Ashley. How do I make friend? Regards. Conduit of social faux pas. Ingmar Grumman. Jaden. James Neely. Janiac, conduit of teledildonics. We used to talk about teledildonics a lot on my old podcast. They're really, the field is exploding. Wait, that's a thing? Yeah, it's like when you have a dildo that's like connected to the, a wireless thing uh, and you're part, and like someone else far away is like controlling the vibration or whatever. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Or you could simulate it if you have like two people dildoing the, each other, but the you, force feedback. I got like, it. I don't know why you're still. <laughs> <laughs> I got it quite a ways back. I got like five more minutes. Why do you? <laughs> You're like, hold on, I gotta talk about it. Janiac bullies Austin while I watch. Why? <laughs> oh no! Everyone loves bullying me. Is it a sex thing? <laughs> Jasper, <laughs> New Year, old me. That was meaningful silence on that question. <laughs> it sure was. Jay Logan, conduit of queerness, mage of life. Jayish wizard, the wizard of Jay. Jealous Goddess Cosplay. Jen. Jenny Colby. Jess Veggie, Conduit of Veggies. Joanna the Wrench Witch. Veggie rhymes with veggie. It sure does, buddy. You're smart, Jess. John Carey. 
but not that one. John Potts. John Barnett, conduit of pillows. John, conduit of subpar joke names. Josie, retired vengeance paladin. Sun too hot. Sun also too cold. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, apparently today it's the same temperature in Antarctica as it is in Florida. Really? Yup. Oh, that sounds... Bad? Yeah. <laughs> it does. Someone protect the penguins. Jew Man Jack, back from the planet crack. Is that like a crack in the planet, or is that like a special kind of crack? It could be like Planet Hollywood, but all they serve is crack. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Julian Phillips, conduit of Kaizen. Just a jester. Just Griff McTravel Roy is back for flashback February. Juzzy, conduit <laughs> of personal growth in 2020. Kate, conduit of fading regret. Kiefer Lowe. Kelly offers Austin a hit of Mitzi's good, good cat belly. I would enjoy that, although I would die. Very allergic. Yeah. Keller Automat. Ken Conduit of finally writing this goddamn PhD dissertation. Kenteroy. Kevin, beasterizing into your heart. Beasterizer, I believe, is the uh, original name of Bloody Roar. Uh, I don't know. Killer Cotton Shizno. I'm going to hold on. Let me Google Boutros Boutros Oh, my God. Again. Can you go? Can you go fan? To keep going, I'm, I'm Kitty googling. Kitty foe, warm snoring burrito, H of Valentine candy, Carito <laughs> Prime, my Patreon saved a life. Damn, that's the opposite of what I wanted. Yeah, Bloody Roar began in 1997 under the name Beasterizer. Okay, I win. I, I'm sure, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> You're very unimpressed with my googling. I gotta say, <laughs> very. Where are we, Christina? Condo to share and needing a hug itself. She really does. Criterion, the smoothest <laughs> of Mario's. I don't know why smooth Mario gets me, but it does. Kyle Badsvick. Kyle, conduit of Drop Goodwood and King Badass Slash Fick. Lady Misfit, Dino Fact, Dino. Dinocorous? Just Dinocorous. That's wrong. I don't care. All right. So here we go again. I'm going to Google Dinocorous. Keep going. Shut up. Larry Yelling Man. Hi, Larry. Who has a show that I'm also a host on called Humans Hollering at News. Plug, 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 plug. Okay. Lars Owner. Ludovico Limited. Luke Powers. Conduit of Flannel itself. Luther. The Conduit of a Button Quail in a Pear Tree. Lynette. X, respect, 2020. Dinocorous look like they're creeping. <laughs> I'm going to put one in the chat for you. They look like John Waters, but a dinosaur. <laughs> that can't be true. I'm putting one in the chat for you. Here Please. you go, Dinoc Do it faster. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they doing that? He's so chunky. It, it, it does basically look like a bozog, honestly. It is Tiny little stupid wings. <laughs> it's like it's not really trying to have wings. <laughs> I don't know where we were. Oh my god. I'm sorry, <laughs> stupid wings. Uh I said Lynette X is back to 2020. Okay, McLeod, conduit of perpetual haunt. Manticore Death Lord. The Cult of Gorfanax. Master Zimnohart. Matt, Hie Matt Hieo Zanik. Matt Collier. Matt Lackett is enjoying some sleep and games. Self-care is hard. Matthew, listen to Dice Funk and Neo Scum Schultz. Maximum side boob celebrating one full year of tasteful nudity. <laughs> Majin, conduit of 3B... 3B... Blah, blah, blah. Conduit of 3D printing Dicosauruses for everyone to know. I'm going to assume Dicosauruses are self-explanatory. Yeah. Melbent. Melissa the Dice Goblin, lots of goblins in the credits. Mayor of Stone, Conqueror of Mountains, Arbinger of Glory, Forerun. Michael <laughs> Hall. Middle part. Michelle Minkler, Conduit of Shouting Chris. Relatable. Midlife stasis, conduit of inevitability. I wonder if someone has ever done the math, how many episodes end, end with us yelling at Chris. 
Mike draws Sonic, watching his film with his best friend, you. Miles conned a strong bias opinions, but she fun though. She is fun, and if you don't think Fire- Smash Brothers needs more Fire Emblem characters, you don't understand. You're wrong. I'm sorry. We can't be friends. Just say the names, you dork. No, we need more Fire Emblem characters. This is the hill Modified I'm dying Matthew! on. Matthew! Mr. Willie Phoenix, Steven, Lesbian, Seagull, Pooh Bear, Shaker. Namita Aneskin's Conduit of Error. I cut you off. It felt good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, if anything, they should have... They sh- mm, no. God, okay. you're so horny for Fire Emblem. <laughs> <laughs> you, you always are. You can't even argue. I think instead of Byleth, they should have added all three. See? <laughs> House leaders. They should have got Edelgard <laughs> and Claude. <laughs> and... <laughs> okay, where are we? Nathaniel Homan? Yeah, you ding dong. Nicholas Dominic. Nicholas McDonald. Nick. Nick Setford, I forgive you for bringing up Face City. Yeah, uh, you're forgiven. <laughs> Five Hail Marys. <laughs> Nicole Woodruff. Only respect for my McQuare. Hashtag Zoe Fan Club. Pie Robsberg. Pangolin. <laughs> just pangolin and then period. Yeah. Patrick, why did you do this? Do you Pat- know why they did it? Patrick Babcock? <laughs> All caps. Patrick Williams. Please check my webcomic, ruinousfortune.com. Do it. Please tell Johnny I like my sandwiches with the dash of gravy. Thanks. L. All of Johnny's sandwiches are very wet. Pocket Sundial. <laughs> Preston Bowers. You're not going to bring this energy into our good Christian credits. <laughs> Pruitt Pru- Hulk. Pru- oh, Hulk. Oh, do you all fucking go? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just rowdy. Puck Boy, which I almost read as fuck boy. And that might be the joke. Pyro Psychotic, because the cake was a lie, and who doesn't like fire? Quantum Materia, Materia Term, Remota Monoxy Marmota. Monax Materium Poss. See, that person needs to increase their pledge as an apology. <laughs> Razumi Yazura. Remsev. Robert Chisholm, conduit of Gigantamax Cornelia wrecking shit. I do enjoy to wreck shit. Rule 34, Bob Chiaclone. Chiaclone? It's, it's very Italian. Chiacolone. Oh, I make a the lasagna and I pay the taxes. S. Kearney, Crisis of Infinite Funk. Salad Child. Scarlet Eyes Yuri. Sean Lyons Burke, Conduit of Manning Violet out of spite. And also because she's a good character and very fun and has a completely different moveset than any of the other Fire Emblem Sword users. I thought you were going to cut me off. I didn't really have any more. I was trying to be nice this time. Oh, thanks. Summons, conduit of harder slotty. Sergeant Rattlebones, another year of skeleton warfare. Shane Sedgwick. Shane Ware, conduit of hedonistic pansexual polyamorous switches. Simon Lee, conduit of chungus bearer dinkus <laughs> minion of John Con. Sin Milk Tom. Sir Octopus, conduit of chivalrous cephalopods. Slime King Mike, conduit of Gamer Goo. That's also jizz. <laughs> there also is a product called Gamer Goo, and I only know this because a journalist I follow bought it to test it, and then I think she basically covered her entire body in Gamer Goo. Something something username. It's not only jizz. Spaghetto arrested for Epcot <laughs> crimes. Sporeman Zero. They love the Epcot crime. Starlight Glimmer did nothing wrong. Stefan Lund votes for Fedora Cloud Vare and BBE on Dice Funk next season. Steven Martinez, protector of Austin's bussy. There wasn't as much bussy uh, threatening this month, I have to say. It's, I feel relatively safe. Well, see, you, you fucking idiot. You just admitted <laughs> it out loud and now they're going to do it more. Please. I'm so fragile. Sweet dreams are made of these. Who am I to disagree? Sydney Marzing. Sorry that pack south soaking in that sun. This is in Texas, right? I think so. Tabitha Spokes. Tales of Inquiry. Terra Flops. Teresi Pyrope Transing June Egbert. 
Thanks, Austin. <laughs> Great show. Oh, that's so wholesome. <laughs> that's the kind of comment I can get behind. Clear to the point. Doesn't involve my bussy. I love it. The murderous mongoose who is secretly standing directly behind you. The precursor. The tasty cakes that Yorski bakes. <laughs> I haven't baked anything in the hundred years. Toby Gleason Stack. Tom Bowers. Trees, they are us. Or trees, they are us. Treesy Therius. Oh, dinosaur. Trevor S., the goblin teacher. Shay summoning tentacles for Austin's 30th. Prep the bussiness. <laughs> I-, I spoke too soon. <laughs> you really did. Universal Toby. William Vink. Will you be my Yamantine? <laughs> That's more romantic. Yams are high in vitamins and minerals. Uh... Willem Dafoe's Secret Sunday. <laughs> that feels like a, a Boston's favorite sun pitch. J- Jonathan, Jonathan, I have a movie. It's called Willem Dafoe's Secret Sunday. I would, I would watch that. Conrad's on it. You like Conrad? I don't know why you're trying to call me out in front of everybody. <laughs> About enjoying Conrad's content. I'm shut up. <laughs> Ziphosaurus. Zoltar, the Viking death metal caterpillar conduit of retribution. ZZZ, maybe Austin will read these in reverse order. Also, I've, I can look ahead and see you got scooped, ZZZ. Good try, though. Also, why would you ever, why would you read it in reverse? You've never done that. Because I'm a dipshit who keeps fucking up spreadsheets. Okay, ZZZ, y'all want first spot, but Lauren Kate's galaxy brains get last word. One, two, three, four. Good try, Lauren Cates, but someone used the, I guess, I think it's like a Danish letter, which is an A and an E together, as in like ether. So Einar J is under that. And then someone else used punctuation. So pu- I'm only when it happened. I wait, I'm only one <laughs> I'm only happy <laughs> when it rains, Zucas. You're not gonna you wanna do garbage voice? What's garbage voice? I'm Only Happy When It Rains is a song by Garbage, and she has that... I don't know everything, Yorski. What's her name? Shirley Manson? Her Shirley. Oh, I've heard of her. Yeah, Shirley Manson. I'm only happy when it rains. I'm obviously a much more masculine sound, but it has a distinct... Anyway, they put quotations around it, so it's at the bottom of the list. I was like, you singing it isn't going to make me have heard it. But it might have reminded you that you heard it on the radio in the 90s when it was popular. No. They also have one of the best Bond themes. I'm just going to go out there. Unpopular opinion. You have so many opinions today. Especially about Byleth and James Bond? (laughs) What's the... That sounds like you, honestly. What's my personality? (laughs) What's my brand? Dumb. (laughs) Hurtful. Okay, (laughs) so... No, Support the people on the show. Uh, we got obviously patreon.com slash Laura K Buzz. That's her. You got Laura K Buzz.com, Laura K Buzz on Twitter, all the Laura K Buzz. I, I mean, the links are in the description. You're aware of them. Patreon.com slash weekly manga recap. That's Chris. Patreon.com slash of horse. That's Conrad. <gasps> Patreon.com slash Austin Yorsky. That's me. That's how that list happens. And then, of course, Lauren, not Laura, Lauren. What are you? Where are you? I'm Rargalicious on Twitter. That is R-A-W-R-G-L-I-C-I-O-U-S. Also, starting in March, I am also a regular co-host on a podcast called Humans Hollering at News. Look it up. It's fun. It's fun and nice. Oh, I also looked it up. That Dinocorus, that that one that looks like a Bozog mixed with uh, John Waters. Its name is Greek for horrible hand, which is also what my girlfriends call me. Oh my god. <laughs> but, um, 